You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I went and seen Andrew's mum last week and do you know what? For the circumstances that her two sons are in, she's very strong. It would have been, and this trafficking bullshit that girls were stuck in rooms and couldn't go out and there's victims. There's no victims. Seeing Andrew the other day on camera made me think they're mistreating him badly. And I know Andrew, I know when Andrew's drained. You know, I trained with Andrew when he was fighting for world title fights. I know, I know Andrew when he's drained and he'd just come across as very drained. And that for me, it did put a lump in my throat. I'd been in a fight one night and I was covered in blood. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd beat up these two guys. And I knew that I had armed police looking for me on the estate. And I rang Tristan, I said, Tristan, I said, I'm hiding in a fucking bush. I said, I need you to come get me, I've, I've done this. Do you know what, them boys, them boys have got your back. And that's what I will say about them. They're super loyal. They're super loyal in terms of, if you're out with them on a night out and you have trouble, it doesn't matter how many guys are trying to fight you, they will be on the front line fighting with you. And then you've got Vice News who are doctoring evidence. You know, they're doctoring evidence. They're, they're taking things out of context to make him look like a monster in any way they can. They knew that was a hit piece in the first place, but people are just reading that from Vice News and they're running with it. I'm absolutely disgusted with a few people. And I'm not gonna say any names, they know who they are. You know, they were up Andrew's ass the whole time when he's risen to fame and now the storms come I haven't fucking heard a word from any of them. They'll never break him. They will never break, they will have to, they will genuinely have to kill Andrew to break him. Do you think that's a possibility though? After what I've seen now with this justice system and how they're treating them, I think anything's a possibility. Then we're on. Yes. Today's guest, we've got Rory Sinnott. Nice to meet you. Nice to pronounce that right? It's Rory Sinnott, yeah. yeah. Yeah, easy work for me, mate. Thanks, bro. First of all, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Good friends with Andrew Tate. I've known him for many years. Yeah. A lot of stuff getting put out there about him. Um, a lot of lies as well. That I will have his back at this as well. That there's never any smoke without fire. We can't be daft and just have somebody's back a million percent. I get that, but... A lot of stuff and accusation getting thrown around where there's no evidence, no proof. He's in prison. Um, they've extended it. We know the corruption in Romania is like that. Um, has he become too powerful where they can't have him outside well, anymore? Well, this is it. And this is what it is for me. You know, like the first 30 day extension, I thought, okay, maybe, you know, maybe. But the second one, I thought, no, no, no. Something's extremely wrong here. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's easy for the media to slate him in such a way that, you know, he looks like this super villain. So the reason why I'm here today is to give a credible source of opinion and fact on their true characters, you know, because I do believe that they've been treated unfairly by the media and by the justice system. And that's why I was happy when you reached out to me that, you know, we could have a chat about this. So, yeah. and I'm happy to cover all angles. Yeah, and that's just why we're here. Like, this is yeah. what it's all about, is to cover all angles and question everything. I always yeah. say this stuff, but it's true, man, life is a mad thing. and whether people get set up, tripped up, there is so much corruption goes out there. And like I say, listen, Andrew's not a saint, but he's still a man with no convictions. He's still a man who promotes a good message as well. I first had him on probably, I was probably one of the first nearly two years ago. And like, he will say to himself, he has a funny character. I mean, just thought it. He's stuff hilarious. Is hilarious. Jokes yeah. and he knows he's going to get a rise. Did they think he would probably get as big as a, it would have I don't know if it did that. absolutely not so all that stuff that he says then comes back and bites him in the ass but when you actually sit with him with the cameras off you realise how much a gentleman this man is how much caring he is yeah. how respectful he is as well not just to me but other people around us very well mannered food, very well mannered boys one million yeah. percent and yeah. I can go with energy and he's got a good energy or else people wouldn't buy into him anyway yeah. before we get into everything though, I always go back to the start of my guests get a bit of understanding about you Rory where yeah. you grew up and how it all began yourself cool well I grew up in Luton you know it's a town where I think a lot of Irish immigration came in the 60s because a lot of them worked at Vauxhall, the car plant there. Um, I know that Andrew's mum, she came from that same background of Irish immigration who come over for the work. Mm -hmm. And it's just a working class town where, you know, it's, there is poverty in the town. There are some rough areas, some rough estates. And 
there's also some nice pl nice parts of the town too where you know the people who have prospered have either bought in these areas of the town or they've got out ultimately but yeah that's that's where we're from luton um i'm 33 years old so yeah a lot of boy mate you thanks, look 21 22 <laughs> mate thanks you bro. look young you do look younger yeah does people say that to you yeah, i do hear that sometimes yeah, yeah but don't, i've got plenty of platinum highlights coming through so Same, mate don't worry it, it just for up, men what's wonders it makes up for it but um yeah so i met andrew and tristan when i was I, I met andrew first funny enough i don't know if you remember do you remember the platform bebo yeah okay so andrew had a profile on bebo and at this point he was a british champion kickboxer and i was actively boxing in the amateur gyms you know i, I was no champion of any kind but you know I, I could i could throw a punch i could take one as well so he messaged me out of the blue one day saying heard you can fight i said all right. I, I knew who they were. I knew who Andrew and Tristan were. I mean, they already had a reputation in the town as being the fighting brothers. And Andrew was already a troll on the internet on Bebo. And I was a troll on my, on my page. So I think that's probably where he thought, who is this kid? So he messaged me and he asked if I could fight. And I said, well, I'd like to think so. He said, okay, cool. Uh, I'll, I'll pick you up at eight and we'll go fight. I said, okay, cool. I thought that's a bit, you know, out of the blue, very forward. Cool. No worries. I thought, I'm never going to turn down a straightener. You know, I love a straightener more than anyone. So he says, right, I'll pick you up at eight. And at the time, I was living at my auntie's house. I'd been kicked out of my family home because I was naughty. I was a little shit. So I was living at my auntie's house. And I looked out the window at eight o'clock. And Andrew's sitting there in his car. So I thought, fucking hell, he's here. So I got in the car. He says, nice to meet you. Very polite. Again, like, you know, very, he'd come across as a really nice guy. He says, uh, what gym do you want to go to? We can go to the boxing gym or wherever you want. I said, well... Funny enough, I got two day passes for David Lloyd's. You know, my dad, it was my dad's gym. So we, said, we can use them and go there if you like. So we went down there. So we got there and we thought, okay, cool. We've got our gloves. We've got our, you know, we've got our wraps and everything. So we got, got ready to have a spa. And he said, do you want to do boxing, kickboxing? I said, well, obviously boxing because I've never kickboxed in my life. And with that, we put our gloves on and within two rounds, he'd put me on my ass probably twice. And, you know, after, he kept asking me, oh, have you had enough? I said, no, 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 I'll decide when, you know, I've had enough. He got up and put me on my ass again. I think after the third or fourth time, he was just like, Look, I think enough's enough. You know, like he's very heavy handed and I've realized, fucking hell, this man can fight, he can, he can bang. Yeah. So um, after that, he said, look, we've only been in the gym for 15 minutes. We may as well go and do a bit upstairs. So we went on the bikes, on the exercise bikes. And on the exercise bikes, it was where we realized that we actually shared a lot in common in terms of our views and things on life and, you know, our, our morals and everything else. So we, we just clicked. We clicked instantly. And it was weird because I struggled to click with a lot of people because I just don't find myself on the same like level with them yeah. in terms of humor, in terms of sometimes intellect, you know, in, in lots of different ways. I just, I find it very hard to click with people, but Andrew was one of them people who I instantly clicked with. So with that, he said, look, you know, I, th I think you're quite a cool guy. He says, I want you to meet my brother. I said, all right, cool. Like I knew who his brother was obviously. So we went to a place called Hitchin, which is Hertfordshire. He had a flat there and um, Tristan's gonna kill me for saying this. So we walked into the flat and when we've gone upstairs, Tristan, all I could hear was girls making orgasmic sounds from a bedroom. I said, uh, he goes, oh, I think he's having a threesome at the minute. I said, what? Oh, okay, well, this blew my mind. I've never walked in a flat to meet someone and they're having a threesome in their bedroom. So, um, yeah, I went into the living room, sat down and me and Andrew were watching TV. I think he was watching Judge Judy, which I know he likes Judge Judy now because when I got to know him, I found out he actually likes Judge Judy. So we're watching Judge Judy and then Tristan comes out with hot and sweaty. Oh, hi, Roron, I'm Tristan. You know, I said, you know, mate, nice to meet you, you know? And then obviously after that, there is no being friends with Andrew if you're not friends with Tristan. Like that, that's not, that's never a demographic to anyone. So instantly I got along with Tristan because obviously he shares the same views and opinions as Andrew anyway. They're like two peas in a pod, mm -hmm. you know? They're like the one person there. Honestly, they, they really are, you know, mm -hmm. they really, and that's because they spend more time with each other than anyone else, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's one of them things where if you don't like Andrew, you won't like Tristan and vice versa. Why do you think they are so similar? Usually brothers, listen, they're brothers bond, but they'll still love each other, no doubt brothers, but I know many brothers that fight and argue that 
they seem to have an understanding of each other. Why do you think that is? I think that stems probably from their dad. I think their dad made them that close. I think their dad was the one who told them how important it is to have a brotherhood like that. Mm -hmm. I think obviously where their mum and dad were separated. You know, I, I know they lived in America and they flew back here to live in England because their mum is originally from Luton. I think they realised the importance of sticking together because they never had their dad in the home. You know, I, I know he used to come over and see them, but I know that they were in regular contact with their dad all the time. But in terms of living, you know, with their mum, I think they, f they found it very important to stick together. Yeah, because when I had Andrew on, I, I touched on his dad, but I noticed he's changing energy. But yeah. I'm going to, once he's back on again, I'm, I will ask him again because he missed his dad's funeral. Yeah. And he had an answer for it, but I don't think that's a real answer. He, I, I think there's such a connection there between his dad. And I want to ask him the question as well. If your dad was still living, would you be saying this shit that you're saying as well? I don't know. Would you think he'd be a different character? Or do you think he was already I, on that path? I, I, no, I, I'll be honest. I, I know they had a very special relationship, Andrew and his dad. And I know he loved his dad, like, to the moon, you know? Like, his dad was his hero. Hmm. I mean, his dad was a very, very intelligent man. I, I met Emery a handful of times. And all I can say is, he was different gravy, you know? Speaking to Emery, having one conversation, would leave you mind blown, you know? So I can understand the influence he would have had on Andrew and Tristan, which is why I believe they're such masculine men. You know, I, I think that was something that come from their father. In terms of the funeral, I don't know too much. I remember Andrew being very, very upset when his dad died. It was very hard to contact him. It was very, you know, he didn't want to talk about it. Uh, same with Tristan. It wasn't something we've really touched up on because I know how sensitive they are when it comes to their dad. But no, I, I, I do believe the reason for the funeral, I think I heard him say before it was he's setting up the business and it was at such a crucial time that he would have missed out on something and his dad would have been extremely angry if he had missed that to go to a funeral or something yeah. along them lines. Yeah, he says it to me and I've watched it back and I, it's always played in my mind. Yeah. I, like maybe that is the truth, but I believe there's more depth to it and I believe... M maybe so. Maybe like, so. Because I, I, I listen to the way he speaks about his dad. Like you say, he hails his dad as a hero. His dad, and he's, yeah. It's not as if his dad was there every day. So to still have that relationship, because a lot of people turn against their parents. I think a lot a of it's respect as well. I think yeah. he respected his father so much. Like, you know, I only met Emery a handful of times, so it's hard for me to say, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what happened in the past or anything like that, or how Emery was as a person. But all I know is every time I spoke to Emery, he doted on Andrew. Andrew doted on him. They, you know, they had the ultimate father-son relationship. Yeah. Even if it was long distance, I must say, like, they had the ultimate father-son relationship. Same with Tristan as well. Like, I, I've... I think people leave Tristan out a lot. They don't realize how important Tristan is to this puzzle because Tristan had the same, Tr Tristan had a relationship with his dad. I don't think he was as close as Andrew, but you know, I think Tristan is the way he is because of his father as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think as Tristan, my, my own opinion is probably the cog, the main cog in the wheel that he's, Andrew's out there, very outspoken, but I feel as if Tristan could guide that. He, he guides it. I think he finds the balance. Because Andrew would just go full steam ahead. Tristan is a weapon. Mm -hmm. Tristan is a very, very intelligent, charming man. Why you do know? you think he's flown under the radar and Andrew's went the most good man on the planet? Because Andrew's the most controversial. Andrew's the one opening his mouth, saying things that are going to upset the global elites. You know, Tristan doesn't really say that. Tristan's more of a different influencer. Yeah, Tristan influences masculinity, but he does it in a way of Instagram photos and you know, phrases that people can read and go, wow. You know, Andrew, on the other hand, is, is saying what he thinks on things like feminism, on things like, you know, the, the, the pandemic, you know, things that are so controversial that are going to kick up a storm. And I think that's why Andrew's become the limelight rather than Tristan. Mm -hmm. So how did the relationship blossom for the next 10 years? Oh, well. So after fighting with Andrew, uh, we decided that we were going to train together. He said, you know, I'm gonna, you've got a lot of potential. You've got a massive heart. You know, but, you know, we get along. So let's, let's fight together at the gym. So I started going down to Storm Gym in Luton and training with Andrew and Tristan under Amir Sabasic, who's Andrew's coach. And funny enough, the week after we met, I'd moved out of my auntie's house and gone back to my family home and got kicked out again. So I said, ah, oh, fucking hell, Andrew, like, 
what am I going to do? He said, bro, come and move in with us. Like, it's not a problem. We train every day. It's, you know, you sleep on the couch. You can do what you want. It's not a problem. So I ended up living with them for a few weeks. And obviously we were all just battering each other. Like Andrew and Tristan would give me a hiding and I'd be their sparring partner. And, you know, so we all just got along. Like we ripped the shit out of each other all the time. Tristan loves getting me in terms of pranks and things like that. You know, like that's been a, a long-term thing with me and Tristan. We, we call it getting each other. So, and there's a rule that you can't be angry if you've been got, you know, like that's not, it's not a thing. You just have to laugh. So, and accept it. And that's where the friendship sort of blossomed because it ended up, you know, me, Tristan and Andrew, we used to go out every weekend together. Uh, we used to have each other's backs in terms of Hitchin and Luton are quite close. You know, everyone or, or groups of people there would, would have known us. Andrew somehow and Tristan, they have this presence when they walk in a room. You know, like, it's like the whole place stops and looks at them. And I don't know whether it's because they're so tall. I don't, I don't, I don't know whether they hear Andrew speak. He's, he has one of them voices that you turn around and listen to. But everywhere we went, they, they sort of had a presence. And we all, always had to have each other's backs because there was also a lot of people in Luton that didn't like us. Why so? I think it, main, the main element of it was jealousy. You know, like they're good looking lads. They're tall. They've got titles. Girls want them. You know, a lot of men were bitter because they couldn't be them. Andrew drove a nice Porsche. You know, and they, I think a lot of it was jealousy and bitterness because maybe they'd, I don't know, slept with someone's girlfriends or things like that, you know? It, it was never a genuine reason not to like them. That's what I always found. Mm -hmm. And the same with me. Like for 10 years, I got called an ass kisser. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like- You're gonna get called even bro, worse now, mate, bro, how and, big they've got. Bro, and you know what? I said it from day one. I said, I'm telling you now, like, this guy's gonna be gonna gonna be huge. I said that about Andrew since day one. And it was oh, whatever, mate, whatever. And now he's huge. They're all following him. Yeah. And I, now I'm right. They've all shut up. They're like, oh, maybe he was right. They're you know, all like, kissing his ass now. Well, they're all kissing his ass now, yeah. and you know, I'm I'm fighting to try and get him yeah. out of jail as best as I can. You know, so because when I had him on the first time, like he has a presence that I've interviewed so many people from all walks of life, billionaires, homeless, gangsters, yeah. soft. Cunts. Oh, I've seen. Yeah, I've seen. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. But he has got a presence. You, you, when he leaves, you, you, it makes you think. Yeah. I remember my cameraman Nick saying that was unbelievable, and I thought, what? Well, because I do the interviews, you don't really see them. Then, yeah, you don't really feel it because you're so engaged to try and create a story. Yeah. And then you watch, you go, yeah, you're right. He's got something. Yeah. I didn't realize how big he would have went. But this was nearly two years ago. I knew he had something. I knew he was very outspoken. I knew it would have caused controversy, but. Fuck me, like to be the most good man on the planet, like Donald Trump, bro, bro. his name's behind him, like, and you watch his videos and I think TikTok's took a lot off now, but when you see them, you realise how powerful the messages are and you go back 10 years as well and how, when they're talking about women, when they're talking about ladies, like, they're respectful and try to tell you the tools and techniques how to be a better man and that's not a crime because if suicide's at the highest it's ever been or something's not right. James, let me say something. So, Andrew has coached me through the day, since the day he's met me he's told me when i've been a dickhead he's told me when i've done something wrong you know he's helped me same as tristan you know like anytime i was doing something that was they looked at as you know degeneracy or like or bad they'd, they'd always they'd reprimand me in a way that you, an older brother should almost mm -hmm. you know and andrew for some reason he had one of them voices that if he'd say something to you you would listen you know, I, I was told by lots of people, you know, my, my own family, be like, Rory, you're a dickhead. Why have you done that for? And I just, like, whatever, I don't care what you say. As soon as Andrew said it, you listened. And I don't know why he just had that presence and that influence to make you stop and think. And, you know, they saved me from a, a few scenarios in, in, in my time growing up, you know, like, for example, I'd been in a fight one night and I was covered in blood. You know, I I'd, I'd, I'd beat up these two guys and I knew that, I had armed police looking for me on the estate. And I rang Tristan. I said, Tristan, I said, I'm hiding in a fucking bush. I said, I need you to come get me. I've, I've done this. He said, Roron, what the fuck are you doing? They call me Roron, by the way, which is Roron the moron. So, <laughs> right. That's just a nickname Tristan generated for me years ago and it's stuck. I even get random people calling me it now. So Tristan come and picked me up and he had a black Range Rover at the time. And it wasn't new. It was an old one. I think, you know, he was trying to look good for business. It was an old Range Rover, but he come and picked me up. He, you know, and, and we laughed and we laughed and we, we're driving through the estate and we could see the police and everything. We're both laughing. And he said, look, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, 
is this what you want for your fucking life? Like, do you really think this is worth it over two dickheads? Like, you know, and it, they just had that presence that made you sit back and think, you're right. Because do you think it's cool to be the Weatherspoons champion? You know, like fighting in pubs and stuff every week. They, they, never, they were never like that. They were always just, they were very placid on nights out. You know, like they wouldn't go out fighting. I think maybe in our time of going out, Tristan, me and Tristan more so. Andrew, Andrew's been in a couple of fights out, but Tristan more so has had my back in the sense of he'd knocked someone out for me before. And, you know, so they always had my back, but they always told me also when I was being a dickhead is my point. So, yeah. I, the, Don't cause trouble, but when it comes to you've got to stand up for yourself. Exactly. I know somebody pull a, a knife out on Andrew sometime, and, because I used to, when he spoke, he told me that I don't know if he was jumped somewhere. I can't remember where it was. People jumped out of a car and they punched him. And, and I'm thinking, but you're a world champion kickboxer. Why not yeah. fucking leather him? But I think in the back of his mind, because I think he told me that somebody tried to sneak up on him one time at the car. They tried to stab him. I, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that from Andrew before. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know the ins and outs on the story, but I know he has a scar on his hand yeah. after so he it. Yeah, he knows how dangerous it is out there. Yeah, and do you know what? Them boys, them boys have got your back. And that's what I will say about them. They're super loyal. They're super loyal in terms of if you're out with them on a night out and you have trouble, it doesn't matter how many guys are trying to fight you, they will be on the front line fighting with you. Mm -hmm. right? And that's something I instantly respected about them mm -hmm. because I'm the same sort of guy. Like if my friends are fighting, I'm fighting too. For example, I was dancing with a girl on a dance floor one night and I got side punched because she had a boyfriend and I didn't know. The girl had invited me in to dance, you know? So I've been punched and bang, wow. So I've held myself up on the wall because it was a side punch. I've turned round to punch the guy back and he's missing. I thought, what the fuck? Like, and I see Tristan doing this. I, said, I looked down, Tristan had laid the guy out, you know, and he thought it was hilarious because he, he got side punched by Tristan after he punched me. So yeah, I, I, I do know in that sense that they've always had my back mm -hmm. and I know that they're loyal guys to be with. So that for me was a reason where, why I thought, do you know what, these are my friends, you know, because. I've seen friendship groups where people have been punched and their mates are nowhere to be seen. You know, I, I knew then that they had my back through any shit. And that's, that's genuinely what appealed me yeah. to them was, you know, their, A, their stance on my behavior, you know, like they didn't encourage me to do anything bad, whereas my other friends were encouraging it almost. B, they always had my back in any fights, situations where they knew I wasn't wrong, you know, like they'd stick up for themselves and, and anyone that they're with. But I admired that in them, and that's what I think drew us closer as friends. How did you? Is there a difference between them from five years ago to when they're kind of relatively unknown to being the most good good men on the planet? Have you seen them change? Have no. they been the same? No, they're exactly the same. I think they like nicer things now, obviously, because they they made a lot of money very quickly from selling their courses. But in terms of character, no, they really are the same people. Like I'm not, I'm not rich, James. These boys have never left me out, regardless of what they've got or who they're around. For example, the Cannon Run is a supercar rally that goes through Europe. It, I, I don't know, I know it costs thousands of pounds each, that's all I know, and I've never asked the exact cost because it, you know, I don't really wanna know because I feel embarrassed that Andrew has brought me on this every year for the last three years. And I've, I've said to him before, look, let me contribute. No, you're not. So the, all right, cool. So he'd pay for absolutely everything and they've never asked for a penny ever. And for, for me, that's, that's massive because it shows that even though they've got all this money and they've made all this money, they haven't changed who their friends are. They haven't changed what their own, you know, their own uh, morals are. So, you know, they're just really good guys. They're really, really good guys. How much does loyalty mean to Andrew and Tristan? Massive. Massive. I know the minute or the second that Andrew or Tristan doesn't trust someone, they're gone. And I know that, which is why for me, I have a key to their house. I still have a key to their house now. You know, I'm, I've been trusted in rooms with money, you know, like substantial amounts of money. And I know that they give everyone a chance. And the minute they, f they smell anything that's off, you're gone. And I know that because I've seen, I've seen prime examples of that through the years. Yeah, people so, just cut off straight away. There's, there's no hesitation, no conversation, nothing. You, you know, it's one of them things, you're gone. Mm -hmm. So, But I think I'm at a point now where they know that I've been in situations where they could trust me now with anything. So, 
and this is the most crucial time in their life where they need as much people they can trust around them as possible because let's be honest like Andrews even says that number one they'll cancer you second yeah. they'll put you in prison yeah. third they'll kill you Yeah, he is potentially that big that they could kill him off I think now that he's speaking on issues that affect the global elites and you know their narrative they're trying to shut him down more than ever and it's made them bigger yeah it's cancelled them's made them bigger yes everybody else to go silent because how can you speak Yes. it's made him bigger now he's got too much influence he can change he could change he could influence an election now. elections that's he's, but he says that yeah and i think that's the thing wait a minute he's right yeah because when you've got millions and fewer videos fewer billions of times he, he's man issues who are 11 12 are yeah. talking about andrew tate yeah i'm a legend to their friends because I've interviewed them. Yeah. How is he? How is he? How is he? And I yeah. said, they just messaged me today, that. Yeah. And they're fucking buzzing. Yeah. People are buzzing that yeah. if you know Andrew Tater, if you know, if you've interviewed them, like, that's the kind of presence it has that. So all the shit that's kind of got them in trouble the now. Were you there when they started the webcam business? Were you around at that moment? Uh, I was around. Yeah. I, I lived in Romania. I think the first year they went there, I, I lived with them. Um, I, you know, I lived in the house with them. I, I knew the girls, you know, I, I still speak to some of the girls today. We're friends and the allegations are the biggest load of bullshit. And I, I say hand on heart because I seen them coming, seen them going as they pleased. I seen them at the mall buying coffees and spending their wages on designer goods. You know, I seen how they were dressed. I seen how they were treated. They were spoke too well. You know, I don't know. Maybe they had a few arguments at some points. Who doesn't with staff and, you know, girls or whatever. But in terms of Tristan and Andrew speaking to girls and how they treated the women, I was there. You know, I, was, I was physically there in the room. And that's why I'm here today, because I'm a credible source of information. They treated these girls with respect. They spoke to them politely. There were some girls who weren't happy with it, some arrangements sometimes. And they'd always say, if you don't like it, you're free to go home. You know, and they were never physically aggressive. They were never, I think they probably swore, like if the girls were screaming and shouting at them because they weren't happy with the situation, I think, you know, they might say, hold on a fucking minute. But there was never any aggression towards the women in the sense that the media are making out. And that's, that's why I feel that it's important for someone like myself to say this today, because I'm, I've lived it. Mm. It would have been, and this trafficking bullshit that girls were stuck in rooms and couldn't go out and there's victims. There's no victims. I, I, I was there, like I, and I mean that in a sense of, the word, I think they've used the word trafficking to try and destroy Andrew because they know that he's brought girls from different parts of the world or whatever, but they've made it almost look like that movie Hostel. You know, that they've created this super villain from, from him because he's such an influence. There was, there was no victims. And I, I can say that from hand on heart. In, and it would have been an operation in itself to hide it from me if there was, because I was there. So I, I don't understand where this is, this is all come from. Mud sticks, but it doesn't seem to be sticking with Andrew. So that's the thing. They, every week they seem to be coming out with new allegations. How yeah. is it as a friend to be seeing that? I'll be honest. I know they're strong men. They're big men. They can look after themselves. You know, I've been arrested a few times. I can look after myself. And they know that, they know that too. But seeing what's, how they're being treated now, is very worrying not only it's sad for me it's sad personally for me because it's like watching my brothers you know being mistreated by a justice system and i thought they'd be out by now so that's even that's even more sad because i think nothing's promised now i thought they'd be well out by now on bail because there's no evidence and whatever you know there's no evidence there's nothing on their case files i thought they'd be out they're not out so now it's getting to a time where it's very worrying and Seeing Andrew the other day on camera made me think they're mistreating him badly. And I know Andrew, I know when Andrew's drained. You know, I trained with Andrew when he was fighting for world title fights. I know, I know Andrew when he's drained and he just come across as very drained. And that for me, it did put a lump in my throat because it's sad to see boys who I know are so well mannered, who are so polite, who will help anyone. You know, they, they hold charities that are close to their hearts very close to them and they give, they give to these charities, they're very charitable men. To see someone who's trying to influence men in the world positively and to see someone who's 
so kind-hearted to the people around them, it's horrible to see them being treated this way. Yeah, you see them very mal that's malnourished with the the beards and they can't be giving them razors. That like, you don't even know if he's eating as well because you don't know if their food's getting poisoned, their water's getting poisoned. Like these are these are things that can. That yeah. If you're so against the elite, not against the elite, but speaking out against the elite. Mm -hmm. They would do anything to kill you off. I think they're doing anything to try and destroy Andrew. Rape them. Yeah, and Tristan seemed a lot more... Tristan seemed angry. You know, Tristan got out of the prison bus and he shouted, they have no evidence against me. They're trying to steal my money and they're trying to steal my cars. Now, I know Tristan. Tristan is a man of honour. He would never have got out of that bus and he would never have shouted what he did if he was guilty. Because I, I know that he... I just know him as a character that he wouldn't do that because I've known him for so long. So... As, He's shouting that and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I just know it's bullshit. And then obviously you've got Andrew. Andrew was looking very drained when he came out of Dilcott the other day, but was I, was I concerned? Yes. Was I worried? No. And I'm not worried for the fact that I know Andrew so well and I know that they'll never break him. They will never break, they will have to, they will genuinely have to kill Andrew to break him. Do you think that's a possibility though? After what I've seen now with this justice system and how they're treating them, I think anything's a possibility. Yeah. And I think because they know the influence that Andrew has on the world, it's absolutely a possibility. And it's scary because he's not calling out small things. He's calling out the global elites and the issues that, you know, are, are changing the world. And they're not liking it. I think he's against their narrative of making men weak. And that's going to seriously dictate as to what happens in the future. And, I think the best thing for, and for Andrew to do would be to go to a safe haven and, you know, just stay there because he's anywhere in the West. I've, I've, I believe that they're unsafe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he's always wary of being in London because I was supposed to have him back on in December. Yeah, and um, but he just wanted in and out. I think he went to see Piers Morgan and uh, a couple other people, but yeah, he wasn't in long enough. He says, "Look, bro, I'm just I'm in and out. Come and see me in January." Yep. Obviously, get fucking. That's exactly what happened to me. He told me that he's not leaving the hotel. He refuses to leave the hotel. He can't go out of a watch on. You know, he doesn't trust London at all. And that's genuine. That's only happened as of late because beforehand he would. He'd, he'd fly up to Luton and see us. He'd, he'd go anywhere freely. But now he refuses to do that because he feels unsafe. It becomes a target then because yeah. people know who he is. People yeah. know what kind of watches he wears, what cars yeah. he drives. You've seen the young kid smashing the Bugatti, yeah. trying to steal the man who's driving watch. The, yeah. the world is in turmoil. There's a lot of good things in the world as well, but it seems a bit shaky at the moment. We've got yeah. fucking um, drag queens reading stories to kids. We've got fucking... Some guy in Glasgow raped two women, put a wig on at court, and they I sent them that. to a women's prison. I've like, seen that, yeah. yeah. The world is mad, and I've got some Scottish girl sticking up for him, yeah. saying that he's, he's at somebody's kid as well. What about the fucking two girls he raped? Like, yeah. It's unbelievable what's going on yeah. now. Like, it's, I speak out about it frequently. Yeah. I get so much stick for it as well, but I can only speak for a, from a father's point of view, from somebody who sees the world a bit differently and not... not be scared to say something just because of what people say like fuck everybody else it's crazy how scared people are to say yeah. what they truly believe and it's it's also crazy how many people believe the mainstream media mm -hmm. like i've seen titles in the mainstream media for example andrew's a self-proclaimed misogynist that's everything he said he wasn't on video but they put these headlines and it says self-proclaimed misogynist and people go oh my god you know they, they say sex trafficker uh, alleged sex trafficker and rapist you know and they, they just ignore the word alleged you know, because it's just an allegation right now. There's no proof. They ignore that word and they just go completely with it. Right, he's a rapist, he's a sex trafficker. You know, I've had it myself. I've had it myself in Luton where people have asked, oh, how's the sex trafficking going? And I just look at him and I say, you don't know what you're fucking talking about. You've been listening to the BBC. And then you've got Vice News who are doctoring evidence. You know, they're doctoring evidence. They're, they're taking things out of context to make him look like a monster in any way they can. They knew that was a hit piece in the first place. But people are just reading that from vice news and they're running with it and unfortunately it's it's a massive percentage of people who will run with these headlines and run with these titles yeah. and try and label andrew as a monster yeah what happened with vice news why did they let him in i think andrew let vice news in simply because he hadn't done nothing wrong and he did, he wanted to give that matt o'shea an experience of what it's like to be in the war room you know, they gave him a fight. I don't know if you've seen, they, they gave him a cage fight and, you know, Matt O'Shea made out that he was enjoying himself and, you know, he wasn't making out that he... Tristan knew it was a hit piece from day one and so did Andrew. That There's, there's no secret there. 
but they didn't think that things would be taken out of context to the point of what it has been, if, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They never thought that Matt O'Shea would tell so many lies and try and corner them as much as he did with you know questions that he already knew the answers to. He was just trying to get things to be taken out of context for Vice News. Vice News itself is not a credible source simply because it's a pure leftist organization. It's funded by Soros. And people like Matt O'Shea, I'll be totally honest, he, he said that, that he went there and he had a great experience and that, you know, his, his opinion had changed on everything because he'd seen everything. And then he went away and just wrote a load of lies. And that to me is a weasel. So I'd, I'd never trust Matt O'Shea. And if, if Matt O'Shea has any friends, then I feel sorry for them. But did they delete the post as well once they'd put it out because there was so much positive comments for Andrew? Is that, is that right? I don't know. Yeah, I think they deleted that. Did they? Well, mm -hmm. and that doesn't surprise me either because yeah. they're probably backtracking on all the lies that they've told. Mm -hmm. So, but people had Tommy Robinson on and whether people like him or not, he has some valid points. Yeah. People were paid to target him. Yeah. Girls came forward, they would go through everything in your life, your backstory, yeah. who have you had arguments with, who have you sacked, yeah. previous relationships, pay these people to come forward and tell stories about you. So I know how dark. Yeah. The government, or what the mainstream media are disgusting. That, whether yeah. it's the Matrix or whatever you want to call yeah. it now, like, they can discredit you. Yes. At an alarming rate. Just Andrew's got such high following now that it doesn't matter. They were so proactive say. on cancelling Andrew yeah. because of his following. You know, that's the, that's the only reason he was arrested so fast. They've arrested him with no evidence. They just wanted him out of, they wanted radio silence from him. Mm -hmm. that, that's all this is about. It's corrupt as anything I've ever seen. But I've never, I didn't see them so proactive on Jeffrey Epstein's list of clients. You know, why, why haven't they been raided for trafficking children? You don't see any of that. Also, the date of the arrest was also very coincidental because it was the same date with the, uh, is it the JP Morgan scandal? Yeah. Yeah, I found that very strange. You know, it was like a deflection from seeing what was really going on. Mm -hmm. You know, the elites, if you don't suit their narrative, they're going to come for you. This is an absolute witch hunt. This is, this is social, this is mainstream media for you that would rather talk about Will Smith slapping somebody on stage it's crazy. than talk about the flight logs for Epstein, the, high, the most high profile people on this planet have been on the, those planes to those islands. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily everybody's guilty who's been there, yeah. but you must have an incline that this man's a convicted fucking paedophile. So if you're there, there's a 99% chance that yeah. you're one as well. You're there for a reason. Yeah. But if you speak out against the hierarchy, listen, man, you become a target yeah. because they've got so much money. Yeah. We're the peasants. Yeah. Not only that, I've, I've, heard, I've heard evidence that's just untrue. I've heard voice notes and I immediately know, that ain't Andrew. Andrew don't speak like that. I know how, I know how he speaks to women. I know because I've been there when he's been with his girlfriends. I just knew straight away that that's not real evidence. So they're trying to pull anything they can so the masses turn against him and hate him because they know what an influence that he has on men of a younger generation. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. It's real scary times because it doesn't matter what side of the, of the coin you're on. It, to be arrested so corruptly is, is a danger for everyone because it just means that if they don't like anyone, they can pick and choose who they want to lock away. And as long as they print a few bad titles about them, it won't matter. What is it they're actually charged with? So they haven't, I don't know. There's no, there's no evidence. So I don't know if they've been charged with anything. I think they've been, they've been arrested on suspicion of rape and human trafficking. I know that the rape was dropped due to insufficient evidence and I, I don't think, you know, I, I don't think they would have dropped that if they had any inkling to it being true. So they had to drop that. They've been arrested for human trafficking. And I think originally, I think there were six victims. No, there was two. Or one. I think that the, the rest have gave videos saying it's bullshit. Well, and Dilcott or whoever the governing body is that have took this, took this on have told them that they can't back out as being victims. But they never labelled themselves victims in the first place. The, the police did that. The girls come forward and said, I was never a victim. No, I, I know these boys. They were lovely. You know, what's, what's the problem? Oh, no, we're saying you're victims. Right? They, they just don't reply. Now they're ignoring them. You know, they're just going ahead with the case. It, it's honestly, it's the most corrupt thing in the world. Just, when you've got victims coming forward and saying, I'm not a victim, and you're still being ignored, that's very worrying times. Because I know a lot of girls have came forward and saying they're the best guys to work with. Andrew's sat in podcasts and says he was a pimp. Says he had yeah. 75 girls yeah. working for him. He said, listen, yeah. keep one girlfriend and keep yeah. one girl happy. It's hard work. Yeah. 
there's going to be cat fights. There's going to listen. They're sex workers at the end of the day. Yep. Not to bring sex workers down, but if somebody offers them money yeah. to say shit against Andrew, listen, a high percentage of the time they're going to take it. They're playboys, exactly. That's all they are. They're, they're pimps as well. Yeah. Like they're, 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 they're doing that for money. Yeah, their main objective to, is to make money. Listen, yeah. if you're giving away your fucking body to make money, then you're a low vibrational being. To me, it's no not matter that, James. Like. Andrew and Tristan, they didn't want to be criminals. They never wanted to be criminals. And this is something I must highlight because when I was young, I had all sorts of ideas of making money and they weren't legal. And Tristan and Andrew were always the ones to say, can't do that, it's illegal. You're always going to be having to watch over your shoulder. You can't do that, that's illegal. There's better ways to make money. There's legal ways to make money. You know, and that was their, that was their main thing. Just don't do nothing illegal because it will come back on you. And A, and B, it's not worth, it's not worth it. The hassle. Exactly. So that was the first thing. The second thing, I know when they started the webcam, that every single girl that worked was voluntarily working. You know, they were vo it was all voluntary. That, that I think Andrew and Tristan may have took their cut. I don't know what, how they operated in that sense. I never got involved in the finances. But what I can say is there was never any trafficking or what the, the media are making out, who, like what they are. So it's, it's very scary to watch. See, when the popularity res rose to yeah. new heights, that... Did they fear that they would get the jail or was it just a, a, an idea that it was a possibility but would never happen? I don't think that they thought it would get to this extent. Andrew always said he was concerned that his voice would get him in trouble because he's saying things against governments and everything else. But I don't think he was expecting this. I don't think he was expecting it to get to a point where he was being held without evidence, you know, because... That's a crime in itself. Being held without evidence is a crime. So yeah, and it's a shame because you have people that are condoning what these people are doing to them purely on the basis that they don't like them. And, and that's, that's not healthy. That's not healthy for society. And it doesn't, these people that don't like them, that want them locked up, are quite happy to go with these allegations and these false headlines purely on the basis of, of hate. Mm. And that's dangerous because it, they may be, there may come a time in their life where they have a relative or a friend who's locked up, like myself right now, and they've done nothing wrong. But, you know, everyone's saying it's okay just because the media said so. Do you become a target? Because of how close you are with them? I'm, I don't have a massive influence. I, you know, I'm not a massive influencer. In fact, I'm known from Take Confidential from eating pizza. You know, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an influencer. I'm, I'm a joker. I'm a, I'm a prankster. You know, I'm a friend of theirs. Have I had comments made at me? Have I become a target in any sense of society? Yeah, I have. I can't go into the pub anymore without someone saying something in, in passing or, you know, oh, that's the rapists, mate. You know, I've, I've heard that. I've heard, oh, that one's, that's, that's the one who done the human trafficking. That's the one that lived in Romania. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you're not fucking mental. You know, like anyone who knows me knows that I'd never human traffic or rape anyone. I don't condone any sort of behavior like that at all. Andrew and Tristan don't condone it either. And I know that because I've, I've hung around with them for so long. You know, I know their parents, I know their mum. I know how their mum raised them. She's one of the most lovely women I've ever met. And anyone that knows Andrew and Tristan personally or dealt with them in any sort of business will tell you how well mannered they are, you know, how respectful they are, how, how they speak to people, they speak to people in certain ways and they're just, they're, they're generally polite. So it's, it's massively concerning to see the position they're in now because of Andrew's voice. Mm -hmm. What, did Andrew get charged with rape five years ago and it get threw out, no evidence again? It got thrown out. I, I remember the case. I, again, you know, I had my own stuff going on, so I didn't really ask the ins and outs, but I know it got thrown out with no evidence. And I know that one of the witnesses who was meant to give a statement said to the police, no. You know, he said, no, I'm not doing that because this girl's done this before. So it, obviously the police went, oh, well, okay, well, she was the one that said to, to ask you. And he said, no, I'm absolutely not putting in a statement in because I know it's bullshit. So yeah, Andrew's had a few people come at him and it's simply because of bitterness and jealousy towards him or a relationship hasn't worked out and the girl's turned bitter and put an allegation on him. And that's gen genuinely the truth because I've seen the statements. You know, I've, I've seen all this. I've seen this happen before, but nothing to the extent of what's going on now today. Who's Andrew's mum with it all? I went and seen Andrew's mum last week. And you know what? For the circumstances that her two sons are in, she's very strong. 
she's very strong and she's she's such a such a kind lady and i know that i know how she raised them you know she clothed and fed them boys every day of their lives you know we used to go i used to go there to pick up mail with andrew and i used to go there with tristan to sit and drink beers in the kitchen and wind his mum up you know so i i know her her name's eileen she's a real nice woman but yeah for for the circumstances her sons are in she's doing really well and she's positive she she knows in her own head that it's bullshit you know she's been brought under scrutiny by the press and I think that's absolutely disgusting because, you know, it's nothing to do with her for a start. Secondly, you know, she's obviously under a lot of pressure. And no, but the way she's handled it is amazing. She's, she's really, she's a real, real strong woman. And it does make me think that's where they get it from. It's not just their dad. She's a very strong lady, yeah. So. Yeah, that's the only thing. It's a strain that when you in prison or whatever whether you're right or wrong it's a strain it's everybody that puts on around you of course of course I've, I've lost jobs over this you know I've been on building sites where the site manager would say oh your mate's a bit of a dickhead isn't he and I'd turn around and say well so is yours he said well you don't know my mate I said well you don't fucking know mine you know like, and that's caused a tension where it's got to a point of I've left the job I've had it's had a massive strain on my relationships in terms of my girlfriend, you know, we, we, we've fallen out massively over all this. And it's simply because she doesn't, she doesn't understand why I'm putting my ass on the line to try and talk so well of my friends in a public light. And the reason for that is because if I didn't do that, what sort of friend does that make me? Do you know what I mean? Like in, in, when, the, when, the, when the storm comes, you've got to ride the storm. You can't be a fair weather friend. When things were good, they involved me with everything, you know? I can't turn my back on them now that shit's got bad. So regardless of what she thinks, I'm always going to stick up for them. And that's caused a lot of friction in our relationship too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like you say, when the good's good and everybody's loving life and smoking cigars. Yeah. Out, all the, the, the girls and parties. Yeah. That's all well and good. But when the shit hits the fan, who's the ones there who's, standing? Who's the on the front to? line? And you know what? I'm absolutely disgusted with a few people. And I'm not going to say any names. They know who they are. You know, they were up Andrew's ass the whole time when he's risen to fame. And now the storm's come. I haven't fucking heard a word from any of them. And they're the people who I will be talking to Andrew and Tristan when they get out. But they're, they're the people I'll be talking about because as soon as they're out, you could bet your bottom dollar. Oh, nice to see you out, mate. You know, it's, it's, oh, I, was, I was saying this and this. You've done fuck all. You know, it's that, and there's also been people on the flip side of that who are getting their voice out, who are saying what needs to be said, who are, who are really revealing their true characters as to who they really are rather than what the mainstream media is saying. And that, those are the people who will be respected till the end of time. Of course, man. Yeah. But people have been using them for fame, public gain. Like, and then when the shit hits the fan, people run for the the holes. That like, yeah. people are weak. I can't stand people. People like that, are weak. People I can't stand weak. people like that. But you're going to get that all yeah. the rest of life. And like yeah. you were saying, the crowd people will be kissing their asses again. Yeah. I've always told Andrew because he was on my podcast. I was getting asked to go on shows in America. Yeah. He was saying, look, just be careful that it's all I set up. And then I, shows in Chicago, Dr. Phil, but loads of mad shows. And I just knocked every one of them back because I felt as if they were trying to set me up. Yes. Because I had that, the fucking fat American kid talking yeah. shit about me and Andrew that was talking about a well, podcast. Well, I think they aired Andrew on Dr. Phil yesterday. Well, the, they, the, I think they've done a story on him. I heard that from Andrew's mum's partner. Was positive? No, apparently they shed him in a negative light yesterday. The, the fat guy was... Who's that? The fat kid that does a podcast? American, scruffy bastard. Well, him and they were just slaughtering me and Andrew. Really? He, how is it? I know who you mean now. I know who you mean yeah. now. I've seen him before. Now I can pick, I can vision him in my head. Massive but, platform. Yeah. Massive platform just talking yeah. absolute shit, man. Yeah, for like, clout. Yeah. But you're going to, people are going to use him. I'll cut up clips because I know he's hitting the headlines because it's still views, it's still business. Yeah. But I'll never portray him in a negative light. Like, I'll always still have his back because. You're innocent to proven guilty. Listen, yeah. if you ever get found guilty, I'll be thinking, do you know what? Well, I yeah. fucked up then. Yeah. He always came across nice to Don't me. Don't get but... me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There, there are times where I thought that Andrew's been a dickhead and Tristan's been a dickhead. I'm allowed to say these things because I've been their friend for so long. Mm -hmm. There's been times where they've pushed me away because I've been a dickhead, you know? But I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here and just defend them because they're my friends. I'm, here, I'm sitting here telling people what I know and what, you know, what I know about their character because I feel it's the right thing to do. You know, I'm, I'm not used to the cameras and the lights. 
I, I, I haven't done a lot of interviews. This is my first interview I've ever actually done with you, James. So it's the best one to be on then, bro. Well, you know, it's just it's like not, what I've done for Andrew's career. It, do you it's know not what I mean? a bad one. It's not a bad one. But <laughs> just like what I've done for Andrew's career when he came on. Yeah, it, it's definitely not a bad one. You know, through in the deep end, but mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm just here to shed some light and some positive light on them, and ultimately tell the truth. And the truth is exactly what I've told you. These allegations are absolutely absurd. They're bullshit. Mm-hmm. What about the Greta Thunberg thing? Where the pizza seem to get... Is, he's not daft, surely. He must have known the coppers were after him anyway. But was it... Did Andrew get the jail because they seen okay, he's in Romania, he's got a pizza. Is that just far-fetched? This whole Greta thing has been run... It's been taken and ran with. Mm-hmm. I think it's completely been blown out of proportion. The pizza box didn't determine Andrew being nicked. They knew he was in the country. You know, they they were probably just waiting for him to land. It's nothing to do with the pizza box. I think it just come at a time where he was having this thing with Greta Thunberg. But ultimately, no, I don't think Greta Thunberg has anything to do with this. I think she got the two biggest tweets in history. Speaking really? about Andrew. Really? Yeah. yeah. That, and that makes sense because Andrew was such a massive mm-hmm. m- a character, you know? Yeah, the so, two biggest tweets and re- two yeah. biggest replies in history, like 10 million likes or something. When yeah. they, the the tweets go up but that's because the mainstream are putting him in such a negative light that someone as big as Greta who insults him or offends him you know they're loving it they're absolutely loving it because they don't like Andrew because of what they've read or you know they don't like Andrew because of what they've heard mm-hmm. it's it's I, I completely get why they'd be the two biggest tweets in history the Andrew always talks about the matrix yeah now what is the matrix to Andrew to yourself that why did he keep speaking about it the matrix the matrix is, is basically the elites, you know, like it's, so it's the people of power who govern how the world's run and their narrative is basically what Andrew talks about. So they, they want men to be weak. They want people to be submissive to, to women and, you know, that they, they want men to basically be as weak as they can so they can control it forever and govern people into whatever they want. Andrew's speaking out against that. So Andrew is speaking against the matrix, which is the global elites and I'd, I believe that he's got such an influence now that they've started to listen and they've started to go, right, let's get this, let's get this cunt out of the, off the street. You know, we need to get him off because there's generations listening to him. There's kids listening to him all over the world. It's not, this is no longer a, you know, a case of one or two countries. This is a global issue now because he has such an influence on people. And yeah, the, the matrix is basically, it's basically another word for the global elites, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you dealing with it all? Like when they started rising to the fame as well, like, it must have been a, a buzz at some point, but did it come on top for you? We felt, fuck me, this is a bit much. Do you know what? I knew that they'd get famous. They were already semi famous a couple of years ago. They wanted like, to, listen, anybody yeah. that goes on Big Brother wants to be famous, no exactly. matter what way you look exactly. at that. Exactly. Like, they wanted to be famous with yeah. reality TV shows. Mm-hmm. And then when you start making money and you start getting a bit of power and getting the fame, like fame's yeah. an illusion. Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. I, don't, look, I craved that because I thought it would heal all my pain. I thought yeah. it would take away all my struggles. And when you, I'm not even nowhere near to where I'm going to get to in the next five years, but yeah. it doesn't mean fuck all. I became more of a recluse. Yeah. I just want to make money. I want to get the head down, create the yeah. best stories the fucking world's ever seen and yeah. make money yeah. and, and have a bit of freedom. I do think, I don't think Andrew wanted fame. I think he wanted status. You know, I think he wanted people to look at him and go, oh, wow, that's Andrew Tate. You know, and that, that in itself is fine, but I don't think you can have that without, you know, the mobs of people that come at you. And <clears throat> their, their rise to fame was very quick, very quick. So Andrew created the War Room, mm-hmm. you know, which is a global network of men with similar visions and men that want to be strong and they don't want to be submissive they don't want to be feminine they want to go to the gym they want the you know they want the image of being a man and andrew has influenced these men and a lot of them are great men i know a lot of them in the war room and a lot of them really are powerful figures and he, he made this he made this network of men who have broadcast him out to such an audience that the fame came so quickly like real quick i think he took over tiktok like the algorithm went crazy so do I think he wanted fame? Yes. Do I think he wanted this much fame? I don't know. That's, that's a question you'll have to ask him. 
but I I personally don't think he did want this much fame. No, well, I think he wanted more money. Yeah, well, it was more for money. Because yeah. Andrew himself's quite a recluse. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you now, he doesn't like to hang around with lots of people. He likes his brother. He, he likes his cousin. He likes me in small portions when I'm not driving him mad. You know, and the same with Tristan. Tristan likes, Tristan used to call it closing the gate. So he say, I don't need other people in my life. I'm closing the gate. If, you know, and if you're behind the gate now, you're in my life forever. If not, I don't want to know anyone else. So I don't think they wanted to be mobbed how they are being mobbed. But I do think that they wanted some element of fame, of course. And, and, and that's many men's dreams anyway, mm -hmm. you know? But like you said, fame's bullshit. Yeah, right. Fame for anything. me is bullshit. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But this, height, this level of fame brings a whole host of different new problems. But yeah. Because you can still make money without being yeah. out there in people's faces. And... Do you think it will change them being in prison? No. I think Andrew and Tristan will get out and I think they'll be the same people. I don't think they'll change simply because that's who they are as men. They won't change to suit someone else. Like for example, if people think they're going to come out and shut up, I don't think so at all. I think Andrew's going to come out and resume as he, as he was. Because if it does change, then everything he said has been all bullshit. Well, you know you, what I mean? Yeah, we, we can say that. But at the same time, I know Andrew as a, as a character. And I know that it isn't in him to stop anyway. Yeah. You know, he'd rather be killed than be told what to do. Mm -hmm. Like that's just Andrew. And I know that. And the same with Tristan. Tristan would rather die with honor than die, you, you know, than, than live a coward because someone told him not to do something. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't think it's a case of uh, anything, you know, if he stops, I, I, I just don't think there's a possibility he'll ever stop. Yeah, it's mad, I know that because that's you not giving in but you're given the 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 matrix we'll, so we'll call it the power that they've won he's a yeah. chess player at the end of the day yeah does he change his moves of course he does like yeah. like you've got to reevaluate and reassess of course because wait a minute they're putting me in prison yeah do you want to be doing a life sentence in prison yeah. if they can set you up for trafficking or rape they can set you up for anything it's honestly like <clears throat> the, from what from how i've watched it and because of what i know i now realize how dangerous the mainstream media really is like, and what baffles me more is the percentage of people that believe them. Like that in itself is, it's gonna ruin mankind eventually. It's, yeah. gonna, it's gonna ruin society eventually, for real, because no one does their, no one thinks for themselves anymore. You, you know, they read these headlines and they just go with it. No one, no one thinks for themselves and says, hold on a minute, let me have a look at this. They don't, they read one newspaper article and go, cool, convicted, and that's it. Yeah, trial by media. Yeah. But yeah. Andrew was in the Big Brother house, he got kicked out for play fighting with the bird. Like, right. He was saying he was hitting her and he got kicked out. Like, yeah. That girl came forward and says it was all about a play fighting. Like, what's the real story behind that? I know the girl very well. Yeah, real lovely girl. I've known him for years. I know Andrew's into his dominant sex games with these, these girls. I know that. I'd, I'd, I brought up the issue myself when he got out. I've, I've seen the belt. The, the same belt that was used in this assault, I've seen it. It's made of felt. You could whack me with it. It makes a huge sound. It doesn't hurt at all. You know, like it's whoosh, whoosh. There's, it's honestly like, you know, like it, it, it's crazy, but I can see on the video why people watch it and go, wow. You know, I can see why they'd, they'd not like him from watching that video. But when you know the truth about it, you know, it's just bullshit role play. You know, and I, I know the girl, she's still there today. You know, I, I don't think they're together anymore. I don't know the ins and outs of his relationships with her now, but I, I know that when I was in Romania last time, which was only 2021, yeah, she, she was still around. She's cool, like real pleasant, like, real pleasant lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when they talk about masculinity and be strong and uh, like what is a masculine man to them? Like what do they believe men should be? Including yourself as well, especially if you spend you know enough what? time with them. That's a good question. Because I think that's why, you know, Tristan pushes me away sometimes because I don't act in a way that they find is acceptable as a man in terms of I'll stop training, <clears throat> in terms of I'll go, I've, I've dabbled in social drugs before, you know, in, in elements like that, they, they, they do not condone that in any way, shape or form. But I think they expect men to train every day. I think they expect men to do their best every day in terms of financially trying to get money for their families. I believe they believe men should be providers. Uh, I believe that they believe men should be strong mentally, you know, and not show emotions in such a way that, you know, you're allowed to cry online and things like that. Like 
to them that wouldn't be masculine, you know? They're very set in their ways in, that, in terms of being a traditional man, you know? And in terms of looking after the kids financially, they think that men should cover, the, cover them areas. The, the, a lot of it is just being a traditional man and fitting the roles of traditional men, which today's, today's generation of upcoming men aren't really doing that. So and they're, they're opposed by this and they're finding that they're influencing that generation to become traditional men again. And I think that's where the, the problem lies with the mainstream. What is the world rooms and how did it start? The war room? Yeah. So I think Andrew was at a point where he'd realised that society was going the way it was and that there wasn't a lot of like-minded men like himself who... There wasn't a lot of like-minded men like himself who he could talk to or, or trust and he wanted to find these guys. He knew they were out there, but he wanted to find them. So he started the war room and he outlined what the, what the war room was and it attracted these sorts of men to come into one community. So in terms of business, you, you could do anything in the war room, but it's all like-minded men who want to be masculine, who want to go to the gym, who want to be strong-minded. He, he sold Hustlers University and, you know, he had videos that he used to sell. One was called Iron Mind. So he'd, he'd basically give a video and it was a course on how to control your emotions and, you know, what to do in certain situations as a man. And, you know, it was, it was all very positive stuff. Mm -hmm. so, and I, I know the war room has massive uses. What's their daily routine like? <laughs> okay, so Andrew is very, very disciplined. You know, me not so much. So when I was living there, I had to, I had to be disciplined. There's no other way or me and Andrew are going to end up having a straightener and that always ends badly for me. Yeah, so 7 a.m., you'd get up. Well, to be fair, Andrew would get up. We would have three different workouts. One was burpees, one was squats. We used to call them squats of hell and burpees of death or whatever. And we used to do a half hour gym workout where we do 150 repetitions with a 30 kilo bar of burpees, squats, or whatever day that allocated workout was for. Now, it didn't matter what time you did the workout. As long as you did it, you had to do it. It didn't matter what time it was. Even if you'd left it all day and it was 12 o'clock at night, do your workout when you're not going to bed. So you'd have to do it. So Andrew seemed to like getting up at seven in the morning and it was almost like to tease everyone that he was getting his done first. So every morning, 7 a.m., I'd hear the, the iron getting lifted and getting slammed down downstairs. And I think, oh, fucking hell, Andrew's up. I better get up and just get on with it because otherwise he's just going to drill into me all day that I have to do it. So you'd, it was more... It was worth just doing it rather than waiting. So I'd get up, I'd do my workout, and then afterwards, Andrew would say, right, gloves on, who's sparring? I'd say, oh, fuck it out. Some days I'd spar, uh, other days Luke would spar. He was, at the time, teaching Luke boxing. So you do your sparring, and then after your sparring, you're done for the day. So you've done your workout, you've done your sparring, you're done for the day, and now we concentrate on work. So you'd have a coffee and we used to call the computers battle stations, you know? So the battle stations are on. Luke was doing his thing for the war room and for Hustlers University. Andrew would be uh, doing his thing on the computer, playing chess in the background. You know, that's, that's all he ever used to do. You, you couldn't get him off online chess. So you'd have your coffee. I'd be processing sales for Hustlers University or whatever courses people would purchase. And Tristan would be doing the same. He'd be finding other ideas online as to what's next or, or whatever, you know. Um, after about three or four hours work, we'd go and have a steak. You know, we'd go to a steak restaurant, have a nice steak, have a laugh, rip the shit out of each other uh, as per. And then we'd see what we were at for the day and sort of figures. This is when it first started. So Andrew would see how many sales he'd made for the day and things like that. After that, if we made enough sales he'd say right let's go do something fun you know let's let's go have some fun somewhere let's go and do something worthwhile what should we do should we go drift the cars should we go in the snowy mountains in four by fours we'd, we'd, we'd done loads of different things and if we hadn't made enough money it'd be right boys we need to fucking do this he's so disciplined like there was if he didn't make his target there was no fun it was simple as that we used to call it getting off the streets so we'd go back to the house he said right once we make this target we're going to go for a steak later on or We'll go to the club, we'll do something, but let's get this in first. And that was, that was basically the daily routine. 
<laughs> yeah. So if you'd hit his target at eight o'clock in the morning, you're in for a great day. Mm-hmm. If you hadn't hit it by 10 o'clock at night, you're still there. You're still trying. And, and that was it. What but, they like under pressure? Because I know they speak about confidence, but every man feels pressed. Every man has bad days. How do they handle it? I think they both handle pressure in different ways. I think Tristan handles pressure a bit different to Andrew in the sense of Andrew gets angry. You know, Andrew will get angry. Tristan will remain calm and calculated. You know, I've, I've seen like, Andrew wouldn't get angry at, at someone. He'd get angry at himself mainly, you know, be like, how the fuck am I going to do this? And I'd be like, well, and then it, Andrew would then, it would take Andrew to get angry for shit to get done how Andrew wants it. Do you know what I mean? So he, he, would, he would then spend a moment with himself and go, right, that's how we fucking do it. You know, that's, that's how them boys deal with pressure. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. Tristan was a lot calmer and more placid than Andrew. Who do you think this, these allegations will be for their career now? That, what do you think happens? Ha. I think they're going to get not guilty. I think they're going to be let out. I think they're going to get more fame than ever before. You know, which again, I don't think they want fame anymore after this or to the level it's at. Um, but ultimately, I think this is going to do, do good for them. I hope it does because they deserve it. Like with the defamation of character that they've been through and, you know, the experience of being in these jail cells that they don't deserve to be in, I really do hope it brings them more success, which I think it will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the, what's the outcome of it all? Was there a court date? Are they going to try and keep them for another 30 days? I personally think they're just trying to keep them in for as long as they can to silence them for now. But they've arrested them on no evidence. There's nothing in the case files of either of them. So I think they're just trying to prolong it as long as they can. I know that there's an appeal on Wednesday. And if they get out Wednesday, great. If they get out Wednesday, fantastic. But I do think they're going to try and long this out as as much as they can. So A, they can't travel. B, they've got time to look for more evidence that doesn't exist. And C, just just to keep making them look bad. Mm -hmm. uh, The more they can make them look bad, the more people don't like them, you know, the, the more that the mainstream media have won. So I, I do think they might try and prolong it a bit longer. Who do you think is behind it all? I personally believe that this, this arrest has come from overseas. I think it's come from big tech, people who don't like Andrew and they want to silence him. They've said to the Romanians, get him off the street. You know, let, as soon as this guy lands, finish him. We don't want him on the street, arrest him. I think they've made that jerk decision to arrest him and put on this big circus of human trafficking and rape. And now that they're inside, they're going, fuck. We can't keep him. We've actually got no evidence. And because it's in such a massive light, you know, it's, it's getting harder to lie. Like they've already, they've already told their lies and their lies are becoming untrue. So it's getting to a point now where I think they'll just be released and they'll, you know, they'll get not guilty and they'll be able to carry on. But in terms of who sent, who sent the hit, I think it come from big tech. How many people's the allegations against is it just Andrew and Tristan or another it's, couple no it, was there well, women in there as well no? it was Andrew Tristan and the two uh, the two girls who were working as admins mm-hmm. I don't know one of them I know Georgiana I know Georgiana very well she's a little shit you know like when I was living in Romania I had quite a good relationship with Georgiana in the sense of she's funny she's cheeky she's rude you know she's she's a hard lady to to crack she one day she came in, I was sitting at the computer and she threw a coffee all over my white shirt, just for no reason, just threw a coffee at me. So I said, I said, now you're dead. She said, what are you, what are you going to do about it, bitch? You know, that's the sort of girl she is. I said, oh my God. And Andrew said, Rory, do what you want. Do what you want. She threw coffee at you, bro. Do what you want. And so I picked her up and I threw her in the pool with her clothes on. Yeah, so obviously then she's like, ah, oh, you dickhead, you dickhead. But it was always in good, you know, spirits. Nothing was ever bad. So I had a good relationship with Georgiana. She come across as a really nice girl. Anything I ever needed doing, like in terms of flights or, you know, I, I needed my clothes uh, picked up from somewhere. She'd always be able to organize anything that I wanted and she, she was always happy to help. People say that Georgiana's Andrew's wife. If you look online and search Georgiana, it comes up that she was Andrew's wife and in a relationship with Andrew. She was, she was never in a relationship with Andrew or Tristan. Mm-hmm. You know how hard is it to be reading the papers and seeing all the negative press? Do you even read the papers? I don't read papers simply because I know most of it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, other than facts and statistics, any story written by a journalist is the biggest load of bollocks. But um, I do find it very hard. Yeah, I do, and simply because 
again, I, I know them so personally to the point where they lived in my family home. I, I know that these allegations and these headlines are, are all bollocks. So it, it is hard to read them sometimes because I read them and I cringe because mm -hmm. I think, no, it, it's not them. People believe what they read though. Of course. And this is, this is the danger. People need to start, you know, looking at things from both sides. They look at it from one side and just automatically go for the kill. Like, you know, they just believe it. It's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It makes me realize that the population, a lot of the population are so stupid. And there's no talking to them. If you talk, honestly, I've spoke to a few people about it. I said, do you believe the headlines read? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would the BBC lie? I'm thinking, are you nuts? <laughs> Why would the BBC lie? And as soon as they say things like that, I walk away. What's Andrew's, when was his decision to go with Islam? Was that a decision? Ah. Because his dad, was his dad not Muslim? Not that, no. I, I don't think that Emery was Muslim, no. No, was he no. not? So what was his decision to go to Islam? In all honesty, I don't know. But I, I did guess. I, I made my own guess. Like I, that's a question you'd have to ask Andrew. But my guess was that he has given up on Western society, you know, in, in terms of what their narrative is to push on to future generations. And Islam is a very strong religion in terms of it's Islam... He agrees with a lot of Islamic like rules and you know the how they live their lives. I think he agrees with a lot of that, and, and that's how men should live their lives. I never had Andrew down as a religious person before. He used to tell me all the time that God wasn't real. So for him to convert to Islam, there must be a real authentic reason for it. Uh, I don't think Andrew would choose any religion unless there was a real reason for it. Big religion to choose from, like I, it's I, huge. And I had Tommy Robinson on. Listen, I don't agree with a lot Tommy says, but there's a lot I do agree with. Same as Andrew, I agree yeah. with a lot I don't as well. Yeah, like, I've known Tommy for years since I was a kid. Yeah, but yeah. religion yeah. as well. That like, no matter if it's the Bible, the Quran, whatever it is, like people would die for their religion and their yeah. beliefs. Yeah. Like there's bad in every religion. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. There's, there's satanic shit in every there's religion. Barbaric there's barbaric paragraphs yeah, in yeah, all yeah, them. Yeah, books. yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. There's right. also beautiful things. Yeah. The things where. I've spoke about it. I've got many Muslim brothers and sisters that like, yeah. amazing people that, like, and uh, a lot of them are troublemakers have been in prison and yeah. they've done bad shit. Whether they follow it 100%, yeah. I don't know, but it states as well that nobody's perfect. And if you're happy with a religion, then so be yeah. it. Be you. Yeah. It's when people try and force it upon everybody else. It's when people try and, like I say, like, I don't drink, I don't eat bacon, I don't smoke, I don't take drugs anymore, I don't yeah. gamble, mm -hmm. don't do any of the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. and, there's so many things in the Quran that I actually agree with. Yeah. There's some things I don't agree with. Yeah. But same as the Christian. You're indifferent. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just happy to sit in the fence and give my opinion. That, nah, that's not right. Listen, if you're happy, good for you. But when Andrew spoke about the Matrix and that, I always thought the religion was part of the Matrix. I always thought it was kind of a I cover up to divide. I believe religion's been man-made. I, I believe religion's been man-made yeah. by the Matrix to, to keep people in conflict, yeah. conflict, you know? So that's why I thought, Andrew, is that a power play? Is there, there must be, yeah. so that's why I want to ask him the question as well. But yeah. if he's happier, and it, it, I, I've seen him walk out the van with the yeah. Quran. And yeah, I, I, I do him. believe he's taking it quite seriously. And that's, yeah. that's great. And that's a personal decision of his. Of course, yeah. You know, and I, I will never discriminate against anyone's religion. Yeah. But, I, you know, I did ask him the question. I remember texting him when, it, when I found out he'd converted. And I said, so, so our favorite film is Snatch. We sit around the TV, me, Andrew and Tristan, we watch Snatch. And they call me Mickey. All right, Tristan even bought me the hat, Mickey's hat. Because, yeah, like, because I've got a big left hand that when I punch people, you know, sometimes I didn't get back up. And so we, we used to watch this film. They used to call me Mickey. And when Andrew converted to Islam, I texted him and the actual text was, who are you, Muhammad Amhard Bruce Lee? So he's like, what? So, so you like Muhammad Ali now? Like you've turned into this, you know, Muslim, like, you know how he turned from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He, says, he said, it's a lot deeper than that. I'll explain when I see you. And that's the only thing he's ever said about it. We haven't spoke about it other than that. So it, there is definitely, definitely a reason, but what? He hasn't told me yet. It'll so. be interesting. Yeah, yeah. And um, when you're in places like that, if you're in a dungeon with no daylight, cockroaches, rats, mm. no food, hardly any water, you're going to have to believe in something. Whether that's a higher power, God, whatever it is, yeah. that's what can save you. Yeah. And that's why I have no problems with people who are Christian, Muslim. I don't See, care who I you consider are. myself an atheist. But at the same time, I do believe there's a creator. Somebody's created. And what I don't know, be, what I don't know, which how, is why I don't want to choose. How the brain functions, how the spine, yeah. the central nervous yeah. system, yeah. the central nervous system, your liver, your heart, yeah. that, that's not came from 
yeah. a big bang. That's not yeah. came from like, something has created us. Whether we're yeah. avatars, aliens, I don't know. Yeah. I genuinely don't know. I ask myself the question before I go to sleep. I think I'm going to get an early night. Yeah. And then before you know it, bang, why are we here? Yeah. And before you know it, I'm fucking two, three hours deep, two in the morning, watching shit on YouTube, trying to find answers why I'm here. <laughs> like that's how mad my life is sometimes because I want to question everything. What is everybody's purpose? Yeah. But is that a game? It's, I mean, you look at fucking metaverse and are we just done a deeper... Trans? It's a rabbit hole, isn't it? Do you know what and the I mean? deeper you go, the yeah. more fucked up it gets. And, and we're just so caught up in working ninety five, trying to create money to pay the bills, yeah. basically living to die without any fun, without yeah. because as a kid you laugh like five hundred times a day. Yeah. Time you get to eighteen, it's below ten. Yeah. Below ten. A smile and a laughter gets took away and fucking so something the system that we're in does not work. No. The system it ends coming from school and even coming from birth. When women give birth the line in their back. You yeah. don't do the toilet line in your back, they should be squatting, whether it's in water as well. You've got your umbilical cord with all your nutrients. You're getting stem cells from it, they're selling it for forty thousand, sixty thousand dollars. We cut the umbilical cord. Yeah. It's unbelievable yeah. that the shit that we do wrong. When girls give birth, yeah. they're doing it on artificial lights, the kids are drugged up, they're on gas, they're on yeah. so many different things that's yeah. polluting the body and the kid's body as soon as it's born. Yeah. Like we're giving a kid a name straight away, we're giving it fucking birth certificates like yeah. as soon as we're on this planet people think oh i'm not microchipped i'm free born, doing, we're born I, into the system i was doing the yeah. rallies when it was the lockdown and everybody's their whistles out and banging like freedom and um going against the government but the, first of all they're, they're drinking they're smoking weed they've got their mobile phones out yeah they're, they're, they're already they're in arguing it. They're, they're so far from free it's fucking yeah. unbelievable yeah, they're already so i stopped going yeah because i thought you're full of shit what is these protests are actually doing yeah. it's just bringing people together they feel part of something but in reality they're doing fuck all but it makes you think those at the top are laughing at those people yeah and now, and now you've got someone like Andrew who's come along and he's highlighting things like this and they're going fuck fuck this guy's got so much of an influence mm -hmm. that he's, he's now you know he's going to influence these people to, to come against us and that's that's why he's in jail yeah. that's why he's in jail it's crazy but you're absolutely right we're born into this slavery mm -hmm. and there's we're no already getting slaves out. slavery is yeah. at its worst yeah. and people think they're more free yeah your mobile phone has totally took control of you in mind yeah. we're, we're already getting brainwashed to whatever the ais want to feed us this is literally yeah. you, you, you're, you're followed and you can't all, get yeah. anywhere you and can't always do anything. mention this man mo god that he created ai for google yeah. he says ai is one billion times more smarter than any human yeah. What it can destroy us, I don't know. But whatever information we're getting fed with our phone is only going to keep us, whatever our phone's feeding us, to see the next five, ten years or, or the rest and of our life. And it's becoming more and more intelligent. Yeah. AI is getting more and more intelligent and it's going to get Feed more, us. it's going to get so yeah. dangerous. But I remember Andrew was on Piers and Piers was saying that kids shouldn't be looking up to you. And he says, why? He says, I've no criminal convictions. I'm a multi-millionaire. I'm fit, it. I'm healthy and I'm confident. Yep. And I thought, fucking good on you. Great yeah. answer. Not only that, did you not realize so piers on his I first piers, i think piers likes him though well this is it on the first interview piers did with andrew i thought it, this could be a hit job piers didn't like him because piers had read everything about him from the mainstream from what people were saying mm -hmm. and i thought there was a sense there of hostility on the first interview by the last interview they're playing chess now and they're friends because i think piers took a step back and went Do you know what this guy's actually well mannered he's polite mm -hmm. he's he's made a lot of valid statements and you know he he began to like him, and that's Piers isn't going to play chess with someone he's out to you know to annihilate. He, he genuinely, I think, he genuinely seen a friendship with Andrew yeah. in the by the end. And, and Piers Morgan's a businessman; he knows he's bringing views. Yeah. Piers Morgan needed Andrew before Andrew needed him. Andrew knew that. Andrew knew that. Do you and, know what I mean? And that's great. But I I, th I think it's hilarious how Piers went from being you know, Mr. Mr. Nasty on the first interview mm -hmm. and Mr. You know, that's his job. That's what he's good at. Of course. That brings controversy of and course. it brings views. Cause I used to watch him attack Megan Marco and I used to thought fucking hell that that's brilliant. But then the more I actually watch her, I realize that he's actually fucking right. Well, yeah. Prince Harry looks at it. Now I look at Prince Harry and I look at Will Smith. Yeah. This goes, this is what it, Andrew's talking about when people lose their masculinity. Their, their wives are running the show and look how weak they've become. Yeah. Prince Harry's left the establishment. Not that I'm 100% for the establishment yeah. anyway, but she's took full control of his life, his decision making. I think she's manipulated him. I think she's played, I think she actually thinks she's Princess Diana. I think yeah. she actually manipulated him to believe. Because when he left the establishment, 
and he was going on about his mum understood that because I actually quite like Princess Diana with the videos I've seen she seemed like a nice woman so I thought good on you man like, I was for him yeah. protecting his wife and protecting his kids but then he's doing an interview with Oprah Winfrey he's selling a documentary rights to Netflix he's written a book she's got a podcast I'm thinking fucking hell that like, you two are far gone as well like. yeah there they are yeah they are that's Absolutely. when I, I you, listen you don't want to be strict and you don't want to be controlling but there's got to be some sort of level in you where you don't take any shit you've yeah. got to st have your stance I believe women I believe as a man I should be out providing for my kids I should be yeah. providing for my missus and yeah doing the right things I feel as if the, the missus should be with the kids housewife cooking cleaning when you get in the house it's full of love full of laughter and then we do things together I'm not out drinking I'm not out clubbing I'm not saying you shouldn't do that but I'll do that yeah. I know what I bring to the table I'm doing all the right things in life but why should yeah. my missus be giving birth to then be going back to work after six months while somebody else is raising my kids I don't believe that because especially the amount of people in fucking nurseries and schools now mm -hmm. that are weird as fuck not, not them all but there's so much weirdness on this planet I've interviewed people who expose it yeah. I was naive to a lot of it and yeah. then I realised how fucked up this world is like I genuinely believe the man should provide protect yeah. and the women should be bringing the love and respect And but it works both ways yeah. Like, if she, like, I don't drink, so I would never go with somebody who does drink. Cool. But I wouldn't tell her, listen, you don't drink. Yeah. You want to drink and fuck off. You ain't going to be in my life because I know what I bring to the table. So it's different. Like, what do you see being around them? What has changed with you being around Andrew and Tristan over the years? <sighs> Andrew's been a massive influence on me. Tristan was more of a drinking partner who was, you know, they're both, they were both my best friends. I spent more time with them than I did with anyone else. Tristan was more of a joker in terms of hilarious, hilarious guy, confident guy, you know, very, very engaging and very fun to be with. Andrew was more of the voice of, you know, authority, the voice of uh, discipline, you know, right boys, enough's enough. You're not drinking this weekend. You're being dickheads. We're going to train. Andrew had a massive influence on my life in, in the sense of, he made me realize it's important to set parameters, to set, you know, goals and to, to discipline yourself, to not let yourself go and to not basically become the worst version of yourself, you know, like, and there's so many men that do it now because they just drop the ball and they give up on life. You know, I've, I've seen guys, real good guys who've gone from hero to zero. And if they had had Andrew in their life, they would never have gone from hero to zero. They would have had the strength to stay where they are because that's what he does. He instills strength in men to, to realize that they have to keep fighting. Mm -hmm. so no he had a massive influence in my life in that sense that he he drilled into me that i can never give up and never quit what's your whole rundown at all with andrew and tristan in prison my whole rundown is that it's very corrupt what's gone on they should not be in jail they have never trafficked any women they have never they've andrew's never raped anyone you know and i know this because of previous allegations being proved to be so untrue. And I know this because I've spent so much time with them. I think that he's been silenced because of his influence on younger generations. And, you know, I, I hope and pray that they get out. And my rundown is that they will. And when they get out, they'll be, they'll be more successful than ever. And they won't change. They won't change and they, yeah, I, th I genuinely believe this is all going to blow over and whatever happens in the future, I, is, I'm unsure of, but I do think that this whole thing's going to blow over with them being in jail. Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed and hopefully that. Yeah. I know I met Tristan, but I know Andrew and I've always said to him, I've got your back. Yeah. I've never, I've, I've, he, he spoke well of you before. Yeah. I remember him saying he was going yeah. on James English podcast. And, uh, yeah. That was nearly two years ago and obviously we've been in touch and obviously his fame's get bigger and bigger and I'm yeah. thinking I need to get another podcast with him this yeah. is a business for me yeah he's going to bring views as well very influential guy very yeah. influential guy and I can understand why people might want to shut him up but yeah. you know you can't shut a guy up for the wrong reasons that's criminal just because you don't like him you can't wish prison on a man because you don't like him it's yeah. uh, that's criminal like I say innocent of proven guilty I've got his back I'll stick up for him I think yeah. what he's done over the last few years has been unbelievable I don't care if they the hold level. him for 10 years James I'll yeah. campaign until they're out because I know them mm -hmm. you know and it's it's easy for people to say well they could have done that behind your back it would have been an operation in itself to do that behind my back but I know them and I know that these allegations are all bullshit I know the mainstream are absolutely pummeling them with headlines that are untrue like self-proclaimed misogynist and it's it's things like that that are worrying for me because people just believe it but I do, I do eventually think this will blow over and they'll come out and they'll prosper. Yeah. I get cycles messaging me 
I get Same. fucking nutcases messaging yeah. me. So if you're the most Google man on the planet, what sort of messages are you getting? What sort of plans is people coming up with? I've seen them. To try I've seen and, them. Yeah. I used to work. So when I was working for Andrew, processing sales and stuff, mm -hmm. I'd have access to his Twitter. I'd have access to, uh, to all his social media platforms because mm -hmm. I'm trusted like that by him. And I'd be on his Twitter and I'd be scrolling through the message requests. And geez, some of them were unreal, man. Like the like the offers and like you get, we've got like all these satanic people in his inbox like asking silly things like rituals. Can you send me a shoe? Like uh, honestly, like and then the death threats come naturally anyway. I've had I've had my own death threats for <laughs> sticking up for him, you know. And it's usually people with profile pictures of cats mm -hmm. and you know or no followers and no no tweets. And it's like who are these people? You know, and yeah. a, a lot of people refer to them as NPCs. Yeah, it's weird, but you're going to get that. that. That's when I know I'm becoming successful. Well, this is it. This is it. Someone said, that's a good sign. Keep going. You know, keep going. So I remember yeah. when Andrew had 200,000 followers on Instagram. I remember he had 30. Do you know what I mean? I remember he had 30 and me thinking, wow, you know? So and then end up with five, six million growing, growing. Because now I speak to Dan Bozerian as well. I'm trying to sort out a podcast when Andrew gets out between those two. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That'd be interesting because mm -hmm. them two are both characters, aren't they? So two, two top playboys, aren't they? Yeah, well, yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, like, yeah. They are the two men in the yeah. room that you wouldn't, you know, they'd steal your girl. Yeah, yeah. 100%. But the people look up to. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Dan Bozerian. And rightly so. Listen, he's, he's, we can hate on people. For me personally, it's, it's one girlfriend. It's not four wives. It's not having bits in the side that I can't handle it anymore. I've done it. Listen, believe it or not, I was a handsome bastard back in the day. I was yeah. a, bit of a bad boy. Oh, you still got it. Don't worry, James. Yeah, you still got but it. It's, yeah. it's, it's not for me anymore. And and some people, well, it's a Muslim beliefs to have four wives or people having change. so many girlfriends. People change. I've lived that. Yeah. For me, is to respect my women. My, yeah. uh, I would know. I couldn't have respect for a woman who would let me fuck around. Yeah. I would think weak. I genuinely would. So for me, it's to yeah. have that responsibility and have that yeah. kind of structure where it's love. Yeah. Where it's listen. It's not always easy. Yeah, my missus is a pain in the ass, like, but I love her, yeah. and um, I feel as if I'm more stable with yeah. somebody solid there by my side. And if that's what makes you feel content, and that's mm -hmm. how you want to live your life, great. And Andrew has always promoted that. Like he's never said everyone has to play, be a playboy. And I think a lot of people think that that's his narrative as well, and it's not. He's, he's very happy for anyone who has a loving wife. You know, he mm -hmm. said that a man and a woman being in love is the most beautiful thing in the world. You know, so people are trying to push that narrative that he believes that being a playboy is the way to live life. And no, Andrew's always said, if it makes you content and it makes you happy, then good, you're living a good life. Yeah, because I said them on the podcast as well. Somebody was working on 95, married, three holidays a year, two blowjobs a month. Yeah. He yeah. says, listen, I'm happy for them. Yeah. He's not promoting... That's Andrew's life as well. Yeah. That's about a showmanship as well. That yeah. on when the cameras are off, you see a, a more polite, gentle human being. Like, and that's why I always have his back. That's why I always stick up for him. I've stuck up for him online. I've stuck up for him on podcasts. Yeah. And like I say, I'm not there twenty four seven. He could have pulled the wheel over my eyes. Yeah. But I'm a very good fucking judge of character. And if he ever got a guilty for mad shit, I would have to apologise, of course. But right yeah. now, I'm sticking my neck on the line. My yeah. career, I don't know. If it, my career would be damaged that I've stuck up from, but yeah. I can only go with my gut. My gut as he is a good guy. My gut as he's trying to do the right things. My gut as I don't think he, he realised he was going to get as big as he was. Of course, the past is going to come back and bite you in the ass, but as mm -hmm. soon as he comes over this dark cloud, mm -hmm. I think he's only just going to get better and better. And I think he genuinely will change his moves and become more like, more, I, don't, I wouldn't say more influential because he already is, but in a more positive manner. Yeah. Because I've already seen the demeanour change. I've seen his energy change, not in a negative, but wait a minute, I'm getting inf uh, influential here and I'm changing lives because people are looking up to him or suicidal, mm -hmm. looking for answers. I've had people write to me and say yeah. that he saved their lives and things like that. But I've also, I also want to touch upon the, what you said about being off camera and being this mm -hmm. kind, gentle character. I think he said a lot of things in the past that haven't done him any favours. There's been some silly comments he's made, which he has retracted a, a few of them, but I don't think they've done him any favours. But you are right, off camera, he will help anyone around him. Mm. He's, uh, he's got a huge heart. Same with Tristan. If I was in trouble tomorrow and I needed help, they'd be the first ones to say, look, you're a dickhead for getting yourself in this situation, but here's the help, you know? Tristan can be quite cruel to be kind, but again, ultimately, if, if I needed them tomorrow, if, if something bad happened to me tomorrow, I could almost bank that if I needed an operation that cost 500 grand, it would be fronted for me straight away. It wouldn't even be a question because I, I knew them when they had nothing and they would give you the shirt off their back. In fact, I seen Tristan give a homeless guy we were out in Luton a few years ago. We were pissed. Me and Tristan were in the uh, chicken and chip shop. 
So we're just having a laugh and walking up the road and there's a, an old homeless guy called Greg. He's quite well known. He used to be a UK powerlifting champion and he lost his way. You know, he's a homeless man. He's a black guy. And he, you know, he hobbles around town asking if you've got a couple of quid and Tristan see him. And he looked, he was in like a, he was in a t-shirt and this real thin jumper and he just looked freezing. And she says, hey, hey, you know, what the fuck are you doing out with no jacket on, man? He says, oh, you know, it wasn't worth anything. It was all, Tristan says, look, here. He took his own jacket and his own jumper off and wrapped it around Greg and said, look, keep warm. So Tristan was in the t-shirt then. He says, what about you? You're going to be cold now, man. He says, no, 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 we're jumping in a cab. And that's the sort of person Tristan is, you know, because he knew this guy for years. He's, he's older now and he, he really lost his way in life. Mm -hmm. That's the sort of guy they, that's the sort of guys both of them are. They would get, yeah. literally give you the shirt off their back. What's the negatives about being friends with the Tate brothers since it became popular? Oh, well, the negative of being friends with the Tate brothers is A, I was always the ugly guy of the group. B, um, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leave it out. Leave it out. Um, B, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm never going to be the richest guy in the group, you know, and C, People always, you know, people always want to be around them. I, I, so I'm always going to be the last choice in that friendship group because people are interested in what Andrew has to say and what Tristan has to say. Granted, yeah, I've had great conversations with a lot of great people, but ultimately they're always going to be the, the limelight, which is fine. That doesn't really bother me. That doesn't really bother me at all. But, you know, it, yeah, it, it was very hard with women when you're walking up to women of Andrew and Tristan trying to chat them up and them two are standing next to you. It's not a great contrast, is it? What's the positives about being a friend? The positives are I've travelled the world with them. Uh, they've never left me out. I've, I've met very influential people around the world. Like I've met a lot of celebrities through them and you know they've, they've given me experiences in life in, such as supercar rallies around Europe that most men would give their arm and leg for. I've, I've had the, you know, the luxury of doing all them things with them. I've stayed in some of the best hotels in the world, the best restaurants I've eaten at, you know, so, and in terms of if I ever need advice or if I ever need genuine help, I know that I've got them there. You know, if, 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 if I had a problem with, with something that I couldn't work out in my head, I'd message Andrew and say, look, this is the issue. I, I don't know what to do. Can you help? straight away I'm, I'm lucky enough to not have to pay a subscription for it and I could get an answer straight away from someone who I know is intelligent to give me the correct the correct way to do things same with Tristan so no there, there are lots of benefits to being their friends mm -hmm. too for anybody watching why should they support the Tate brothers they should support the Tate brothers a because uh this whole this whole arrest is corrupt like the way they've been mistreated is is disgusting um, B, there is absolutely zero evidence in any of their case files. Uh, C, the Romanians. C, the Romanians are completely going against, you know, what, what's right. Look, I, I believe that if there's no evidence, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be held for, for this long. And mainly because I know who they are as characters. You know, I, I know who they are, and I know what they've done and what they haven't done. It's it's very difficult for me to to, to watch it all anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Rory, well, listen, well done for your first interview, brother. You've done you. well. Thank you. Would you like to finish up on anything? Yeah, I'd just like to say, uh, don't believe everything everything that you read in the mainstream, and you know, take your own opinion on things. Don't just accept an allegation because you don't like someone, and to make your own mind up and understand that making these decisions are very important for future generations themselves. So. Yeah, that, that's all I want to say. And I just want to say that Andrew and Tristan are very good guys. They've, they've always been gentlemen. They've always been well-mannered and polite. And you can ask anyone around them if that's the truth. And yeah, other than that, just free the guys. Get them out. We need yeah. them out of jail. Yeah, I can back that statement. Like I say, they're nothing but gentlemen, nothing but nice, friendly, yeah. always nice to the waiters, always nice to staff. Every yeah. time I've been with them, like, every, every time I've been with Andrew, he's been nothing but a gentleman. Like. I think they're a massive positive inf influence mm -hmm. on men across the planet. And I think that's why they're in jail. So I, yeah, I just want to conclude on saying that they don't deserve to be in jail. They do not deserve to be where they are. And the sooner they're out, they're better. The, the sooner they're out, the, the better. And I can't wait to see them. Oh. Rory, listen, James. I wish you all the best, brother. Thank you, pal. Well done today. Thank you. Take care, and hopefully the boys are freed soon. Excellent. Cheers, Thank you, brother. James. Cheers, pal.